dear Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you this evening with humble hearts, Father. We ask that the words that I say here tonight, God, would be would bring glory to your name, God. For we know it's not about us, but it's about you, God. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit would be present in this place tonight as we go forward with this service. And we just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read a scripture from Lamentations before I begin. It's um, Lamentations 3, 19 through 22. And this is actually out of the NIV. It says, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. When Paul began asking me to give my testimony about two months ago, you know, I was extremely reluctant at first because uh, public speaking is usually the last thing that people want to do. I heard someone say recently that, um, that, Public speaking is actually the number one fear, and the next one is death. So it's actually better for you to be uh, dead than given the eulogy, is what they say. So um, I'm, I want to just start off kind of, I have to tell a story about how things kind of played out in order for me to kind of lay this all out there. Um, 2013 was the worst year of my life. I pretty much struggled with depression, which led to one addiction or another, um, for about 15 years, I went through that, and somewhere along in there, I pretty much settled on meth. And um, 2013, I was in and out of jail. I think I went to jail about five times that year, and um, really the pivotal moment for me was whenever one of my very best friends, one of my oldest friends, um, overdosed by purposely in ingesting so, like a large quantity of meth that he had actually gotten from me and my boyfriend at the time, and he died. So, you know, God really began working on my heart. And that year also, in December, I was going to be turning 30. Well, I had started doing meth when I was 15, so the closer it got to my birthday, the more I started realizing, you know, after this birthday, I've spent longer of my life being high than I have being sober. And who am I outside of this life that I'm living? Who who am I really besides this strung out drug addict who has a daughter at home who I leave there because in my head I justify the fact that I'll, at least I wasn't dragging her around. But that's no excuse to not be a mother. So um, the closer it got to December and the more that it seemed like everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. Um, I really cried out to God one day. I, I just had reached my breaking point, and, you know, I just cried out. And I was at the point where I was so lost and so consumed with everything that I really was not even sure that I knew that God was real. But I cried out, and I was like, God, if you are real, if you are real, then I need you. I need you to show me that you are real and that you care about me and that you that you don't want to see the worst happen to me. Because at that point, I had decided that if my life had not changed by my birthday, then I was going to kill myself. Because I knew I could not live one more day, one more moment of my life being the way that it was. But my, what a different plan that God had for me. Um, it all started off um, December the 9th. 2013, uh, 20 days before my actual birthday, um, the cops came to a friend's house that I was at um, that morning because of something completely unrelated, but they wound up arresting me because I had some unpaid tickets, and it was actually an officer that I had known like my entire life, and we're talking on the way to uh, jail and, and things, and I'm just, and he's like, you know, he was like, um, you really need to sit out these tickets, but it's almost Christmas, and I don't really want you to be in here for the holidays, so I'm sure... And I was like, no, stop right there. Because I felt God in it, even in that moment. I'm on my way to jail, but I knew. I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, you know what? You said you needed me. God, you said you needed me. Here I am. So this is your opportunity. Take this chance that I'm giving you. So um, I told him, no. You know, I want to stay. And when I get out of here, I want to go. There's a faith-based rehab. I've already been looking into it. And he was like, okay, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. So he called my sister, and um, 
you know, uh, and let them know what was going on. I stayed, I stayed in jail. It was, I got out of jail to go straight to the rehab on December the 27th, which is two days before my birthday. On the way to the rehab, it was just me and my sister were talking, and she says, you know, Jackie, it was the weirdest thing that uh, whenever Chris, the officer, when he called me and he was telling me that you had decided that you wanted to go to rehab, you know, about a month before that, I had something just told me to ta start taking this money and putting it into a savings account. She's like, you know, I really didn't even know why I was doing it. Um, and it worked out that she had, like, almost exactly what I was going to need in order for me to go to this faith-based rehab center, which it was crazy because when I got there, I was, like, one of five, and I was the only one that actually had the money to go, whose family was able to put it up. Um, so, anyways, here I am. It's two days before the day I had planned on, you know, taking my own life, and I'm in a faith-based recovery, I'm, you know, we're deep in the word by that time. Um, in February of 2014, um, the best day of my life, no comparison whatsoever, was the day that I got baptized. Um, since that time, here I am, it's been a little bit over a year and a half later, um, God has literally hand placed me in the job that I work in. I'm filled with, uh, it's filled with Christian women that are supportive and strong. Um, I am leading a women's Bible study group every Monday night. I'm in youth ministry at my church. Um, needless to say, what God's plan was compared to what my plan was, was very similar in the sense that I was going to die. And I did. I died to myself. And I was brought back in Christ. And um, in saying all that, I just want to say that you never really truly know who you are until you know who God says that you are, because that will change you. Um, you do not know how to give until you understand what was given for you. You don't know how to love until you experience the Father's love for you. Um, you've never truly lived until you've been reborn. Um, don't leave here tonight if you have a need. Don't let pride keep you from speaking to someone here about whatever it is that's bothering you. Um, God loves to take who the world calls a lost cause and make them into his most devoted followers. James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Um, since I gave my life to Christ, I've been delivered from things that I never even realized was a bondage. I've been delivered from depression, anger, worry, um, addiction, you know, the, there's things that are obvious forms of bondage that we can think of that are just quick to name, but there's things that I was delivered from immediately that I didn't even realize until after they were gone that I had a problem with. Um, if you struggle with anything tonight, anything at all, if anything has a hold over your life, then talk to someone here. The people that are here in this ministry, they truly, genuinely care about you. They, they know they know what God has done for them, and they want to see God do that for you. And all you have to do is come and talk to someone. Um, and in closing, I just want to read what I thought was a poem, but it turns out apparently that it's an old hymnal. Um, it says, Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Just remember that I'm a human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord.